Hi and welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about the fuel system on the R53. So what we're going to concentrate on is the pump and if you're going to be running a fuel return what you should do. So in this case what we're using, we're using a Walbro 225 pump and it does fit the Mini but it does require you to put, put this neoprene sleeve around the outside of it. So once you've essentially uh, put the sleeve round like that you can drop that into here. Other modifications that you're going to need to have to do is take your standard housing out and what you'll see here is I've got a bit of heat shrink from there to there and the reason I've got that heat shrink in there is this isn't the standard mini plug so you want to essentially cut the wiring off that was already there and replace your wiring for whatever pump you're going for. Now in terms of cutting and uh, modifying this I didn't have to do anything with the wall bro pump but I am going to have to make some cutting for the fuel return. If you're fortunate enough this nipple on the top, you'll have a facelift car, so that's that part just inside there. And what happens is you can use this part here as a fuel return. You take the fuel line back from your fuel regulator to there, and essentially on the other side, what you'll see is there's a hole in there already. Now, I'm sure somewhere in the world there is a fitting that goes onto this and can latch round and you'd be able to use. I've gone for AN fittings throughout, but obviously that's not an AN fitting, so I'd need a push on. I've had a look around. If you have a facelift model, you can go out, you can buy one of these adapters. They're fantastic, they'll push on, and no worries, you've got a, a dash eight fitting there, or a dash six if you choose to use this, and you can return that back to the top of the tank. Now, this being a pre-facelift model, my options are I go out and just get myself a facelift model here. That would be the simplest solution but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna modify this unit to take my dash fittings in a slightly different way. Other things, if you are using the return there and you decide that you don't want dash fittings, your fuel, uh, what would you call it? I would call this a, uh, it, it basically your carbon filter allows fuel back into the system, so it's an evap uh, solenoid. This part here that comes off the bottom that you'll find underneath, actually fits the facelift fuel return so you could if you remove that put a hose onto it and you can return it no worries they can go together uh, obviously it wouldn't be that but that is the fitting that you will find on the facelift fuel pump not on the pre-facelift so that to me is pointless so what we're going to go with is a dash 8 bulkhead fitting a dash 8 nut that goes on the end a compression fitting and as you can see behind me here I've got a, uh, a ring of uh, aluminium dash 8 pipe work and the idea behind this is we're going to drill through this hole here or what will be a hole we're going to drill there we're going to take this fitting we're going to fit him onto there and we're going to take the pipe work from there and we're going to drop it to the bottom of the tank ideally as far away from the pickup as we possibly can and the reason we want to take it away from here is yes i've got fuel coming and it's definitely going to be returning back to the tank slower than what it's going out but um, i need to make sure that i get this pipe away to stop any air induction to this pump if you start getting air in here you'll be pumping air you'll find that the pump is scavenging and you won't be getting good efficiency from the pump that you're using now there are a few other ways to do this you could take your pump here and you could then go back through to this position and you could just use the pump to feed out of this position because currently what happens is the fuel is sent over to your fuel filter which is the opposite side of the tank and then that is sent to the car now i'm keeping that fuel system the way that it is. I quite like it, it's worked for me. I like the standard filters, no worries. But if you want to change it, you could essentially take the pump straight to here, keep everything inside the way it is, and return your fuel to the other side of the tank. We need to be going for, it says 19. So about a 19 mil hole. The spigot that we're gonna be using at the moment is about a 10 mil, so we've got plenty of room. So what I'll do first is open this up and get started removing some of the plastic. So what I'm going to do now, just before I start drilling anything, you've got this really fine mesh filter down at the bottom of the fuel pump. I want to get that out of the way. So we want to modify this top part. There's four screws on the inside here that if we remove that, that will separate these two halves. So 
So there we go, two separate parts. What this would allow as well is you can now get this lid off. Uh, you sometimes need a screwdriver to help. There we go. So the, inside the filter housing, you may be able to see, hopefully you can see that there's some debris in this outer circle. And the reason for that is this is your fuel pickup. That's your fuel filter. Here you've got almost a drain return through. And the reason that you see debris in the outer part is something because the top here has a grey pipe that comes in from your other side of the fuel tank because you've got two parts to pick up. And that drops into there. So any of that debris is unfiltered. It goes through onto the inside. It drops into the outside here and then there's filters before it picks back up again. And there's not too much debris in here. That said, I did clean it out a few years ago and it hasn't done many miles since. These can get quite grotty in here. So at the same point that you're cleaning out your filter on the other side, it's probably a good idea just to jump in this, take your pump out, separate it, and then give this a good clean, which I will do as well. Um, and I'll just get this out of the way now so we can start drilling and modifying the other parts. The first thing I'm going to do is probably just get myself a hole started and I'll go from the inside out. So what we want to do is grab our drills and find a nice drill that uh, fits. So we've got the, the set that is coming to the end of its life. Let's see what size that hole is that we'd start with. That's probably a good size. So we'll use a, it's an, I think it's a seven and a half, seven and a half mil drill. And all we're doing is just opening up this hole to start with. We'll use a step drill, ultimately. So on the bench. Nice and slowly. Now, if you'd had a facelift, all you would have need to do is just cut this end off so the tank is sealed with this green little nipple that goes on the top. That's both for the pre-facelift and the facelift, but I can't find a fitting here and I have tried to contact people and find out what went on there. This nipple was obviously for something in the past, but I don't know what it is. I can't find anything that fits it, so hence what we're doing here. Let's put some of that debris in the bin. Right. So the next step is that we've got a hole. I'm basically going to use a step drill just to remove this. Okay, so 18, so that, that gets us a good size. Okay, so right now I'm just going to do a bit of step work from behind to open it out and then I'm going to come to the front and open it up as well. Currently we're about to go into 14, and we've got 14, 16, 18. Nice. And there we go. That's the top part of the fitting removed. Uh, I might keep that just for measurements because that might be useful in the future. Uh, I might actually one day find out what that is, but for now that's too late. We've got a nice little hole running through the top for our fuel return and what we're going to do is continue to open that up to allow for this dash 8 bulkhead fitting to fit. Doesn't fit yet. Maybe this time I'll tighten up the chuck a little more. And we'll do it from the top now because the chuck was getting a bit close to everything else below. And on this one, we can go all the way up to 32. We don't need to. I think we'll be stopping at 20. We want a bit of wiggle room, but not a lot. It's not as if there's uh, a lot of pressure on this. Good. There we have a lovely big hole for the fuel to return. We've got this fitting here 
and on that side you might be able to see there's an o-ring so what we're looking to do is fit that into the tank there and we can then put the nut on the other side now i'm quite close to the wall but there should be enough room if not then the nut's going to get modified Here's the nut, it's just a standard dash eight nut that we're gonna be sticking on this side. And yeah, it fits. And there we go, a non-tightened dash eight fitting. And are we the right way around? Yes, we are. We're the right way around. So on the inside, what you can see is, here's my return pipe and what we'll be fitting is essentially that fitting, which has got a little insert in that goes inside the aluminium pipe. That'll come off and drop down. What you do need to be aware is that ne isn't necessarily where you expect the bottom of the tank to be. They've done this adjustable so it fits different sides of the tank and it always keeps a firm push on the bottom of the tank. So it fits several different versions. So what I need to do is run back to the tank and take a measurement, see where the bottom actually is. That's gone in really easy, really well and my fitting can now go onto that. And the nice thing is the way that the fuel tank is shaped, I know that I've got enough room here for my fitting next to the plug. What I'm gonna do here is just show you how this would normally fit into your tank. So once you've got that all open and ready to rock and roll, you've got the sleeve that goes around your wall, bro. You have to transfer this pipe off of your old pump and put it here using the spring clip. Obviously do the soldering, make sure you put positive and negative the correct way around. There's this O-ring down the bottom that fits in and then there's a gauze at the bottom which you can remove to give a little bit of clean out and I'm going to have to do that as well shortly. But essentially all we're doing is you're fitting it into your pump housing just like that. You want to locate it so the plug is visible from the top. And that is essentially you've got your pickup down there so you've got a very, very fine mesh. You've got a coarse mesh that's inside here and that is the pump already in with its strainers but take this out give it a clean and i can then uh, reassemble so all our parts laid out here and we're going to just take this and assemble it so pump into its housing brilliant you then want to uh, grab the cap of your pump make sure you haven't cracked any of these as you've took it apart if you have you probably want to get those replaced over the top here and essentially clip on all round and you've got your housing and your pump put together nice and easy you want to get your fuel level on make sure that it's working and it drops if you need to put a multimeter across there and just check that it's reading correctly whilst we've got this apart it's probably worthwhile just making sure that the float is okay if I lift it up and drop it down, it drops perfectly. There's no sticking, there's no stiction between here. The contacts, if you look underneath there, I don't know whether I can show it clearly on the camera, there's two contacts. You just want to eyeball them, make sure that they're completely flowing up and down. The next thing I'm going to do is get my multimeter out and just check the resistance. We're looking at about 300 ohms at the top and anywhere between 0 to 20 at the bottom. Let's get on and see what we're reading. So right now at the bottom it's reading 21 ohms, about what I was expecting. And then taking it up to the top, it's gone to 299.3 ohms. So I'd say that this is reading as I expected. You take your float, make sure your wires are out of the way and we're not gonna pinch them. And we want to screw this back together using the Torx fittings that were already in there. So there we have the assembled pump but we need to make sure now everything else is right there's a clip here and a clip here we want to make sure that as we're putting it together the wires are running through those clips we want to make sure that everything's tight and connected together take the uh, power connection for the pump and push it down until it clicks into place okay once that's in place that's your pump located and then what you need to do is get this other pipe over here which is for the other side of the tank switch uh, it basically is your level for the other side so you've got the same leveling system going on here over the other side so that's it now we can go and get this all wired up in fact i'm fairly sure that used to uh, come off and go around this side of the tank and then it would click into the top there we go and then that went over to the other side. 
you've got your fuel return here from the other side this goes over to your fuel filter and then we've got our fuel return here and what we'll do now is make a pickup that is far enough away from here so I'll go and take some measurements and then we can uh, get on with it okay so what I've done got to measure the uh, fuel tank and there's about 200 mil from the top to the bottom so if we just go from there to there that essentially showing you what the bottom of the tank is so if I squash that up that does show that this is probably all the way to the bottom normally when this comes in so what I want to do is have my return coming somewhere down the bottom and then we'll take it out so I'm going to need a little bit of this it's quite pliable it's quite easy to move I certainly don't need this quantity but it's always good to have some kicking about so let's get some off the reel when you take this off what you want to try and do is just unwind it okay so what we've got here is the length of pipe that's been cut what I need to do is just go and get rid of the burrs off either of the end and then we need to shake this but essentially what we're going to do is probably want to take the burrs off before we do this see if he fits that essentially will go over the end like that and then we'll have our nut that fits over the top that allows me to screw on I just want to form this then into what I need here is our aluminium pipe cut and ready to go in as you'll see when it's up here it looks like it's ridiculously high but the reality of it is in the tank it sits down low and what we can try and do is move this pipe as far, as far away as we can from the pump so at least any of the air bubbles should hopefully be removed okay our pipe here we've got the fitting slid over next thing we want to do is essentially sway this end just so when it all bolts up it seals nicely so what we do is swaging tool here essentially you have to make sure you match your angles for what you want and we lock the pipe into the top up here we tighten up the two fixings You know, just want to evenly balance these they hold the pipe nice because what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to essentially push against this using this tool here and we're going to add the, uh, the swage to the top and all this does just fits round goes over and as you'll see here that cone presses in flares it out and that will then give us the shape which will help to hold all of this against our uh, dash 8 fitting tighten that up it will create a flare which then we can slide the nuts over and tighten it up against the bottom of our return in the back of the car what you can see here is this is my fuel sender system so this is the filter that lives inside the R53 and as you can see, what I've got is an aluminium dash six fitting that runs off to the hose. On the other side, as for the modifications we saw in the other video, there is my dash eight returning into the top of the tank. Hopefully we can get some light on it. It's pretty dark in here right now. And you see, I've got the standard wiring loom in there and all of that down there is essentially standard equipment. At some point, potentially, I might get that out and give that a clean. But over there, let's see if we can get top down. There you go. So what you've got is two different fittings. You've got the dash six fitting, which goes to the hose, and then you've got this quick fit, is what they call, that goes on there. But you'll find all the part numbers in the description below anyway. Here we are in the engine bay of the R53 yet again. And what we're gonna go over is the fuel system at the front end and what I've changed and what I've kept. So ultimately, everything that's on here has been changed. So let's go over what's standard and then what's been changed. So on your R53, typically you'll get these beige injectors. You could get blue injectors, which you'll get if you've got a JCW, but generally they're this size, they've got an EV2 connection on the top of them. Uh, that's fine, but what you will find is most of the injectors that you will find have a different connector, normally something like an EV6 on the top of them. So what you can get is link leads that go between this plug and this plug, and that will allow you to change them. Or you can do what I've done. Essentially, I've made a whole new harness, but what you could do is cut the plug off and put the correct plug on the end. It's up to you. I don't like to have loads and loads of connections. So the fewer connections, the fewer problems I'm gonna get. So that is an old manky injector that probably came off of this car or one of the other R53s years ago. 
The other thing you may be familiar with is if, if you've started taking your R53 apart is your fuel rail. This is the standard Cooper S fuel rail. It's very similar to the Cooper fuel rail as well, but this is a Cooper S. Generally, you can tell the Cooper ones are shinier and they have a return that comes up here for uh, some plastic cowling that goes on. On this fuel rail, you've got your inlet just there, pointing to the wrong thing. You've got your inlet, which is just there. You've got on this side underneath this cap, you've got a Schrader valve, and that's basically for letting your fuel go. So if you are gonna take your fuel system apart, what you wanna do is take this cap off, just put your finger or a screwdriver in there and it'll let the fuel pressure out. Uh, this basically holds fuel pressure all of the time. The next part you have on this fuel rail is this fuel pressure regulator. Now this is built in and this is at three and a half bar. So ultimately that's what's governing your fuel pressure. And what happens is well, you've got a line that comes off here, goes to your inlet manifold, and depending on whether you're on vacuum and boost, it tells this whether to close or whether to open. And the reason you have to control this is if you manage to produce three and a half bar worth of um, essential boost from your supercharger or turbo, which you're not likely to do on one of these engines, you would actually back pressure up the fuel injectors and stop the injectors working. So it basically helps to repressurize the whole system and balance the system out. But that is your standard fuel rail and it's quite competent. I've used this last time producing close enough to 400 horsepower. So it will deliver providing you've upgraded the pump. I decided this time around I wasn't going to go with the stock fuel rail. I was going to upgrade the whole system. I chose to go with the Nuke fuel rail, partly because it's a direct fit, and other than that, it looks quite slender, it's quite simple to use, and it fits really nicely, and it looks good in the engine bay. So what have I got? I've got a 1,000 cc injectors. I don't need them to be that large. I could probably get away with a 500, maybe a 600, possibly a little bit more, but a 1,000 means that I'm not running them at full scale all of the time. I've got the Nuke fuel rail, on this side here, we've got the fuel return. We've got the fuel delivery system. So this pipe, this AN6 is new and it comes from my fuel pump all the way under the car, round and into here. What's delivering me fuel? As, after it's gone through the fuel rail, any of the fuel that's not used up inside these injectors or over pressure is then returned back to a new fuel pressure regulator. On this fuel pressure regulator, I've got my vacuum hose here. That means I've got a constant link between the pressure in the inlet manifold and pressure to my fuel pressure regulator. Underneath, I've got a dash eight fitting which returns back to the tank. And the reason I've gone for a dash eight return and a dash six feed is dash six is plenty big enough for the fuel that I need to deliver to these injectors for the power that this car is gonna run, which will be about 400 horsepower again. But on the return, I want to make sure that the fuel returning is as slow as possible so I'm not causing any air bubbles in the tank, try and get around some of the cavitation that may be caused in the tank. Other things on this fuel pressure regulator, at the front, I have a 100 PSI fuel pressure sensor. Now, a lot of the cars you see people putting a, a, essentially a gauge on the front so they can see this in there. I've got a race dash, I've got my PC. I'd like to keep all of the data in one place. So consequently, we keep that little fella in and I can see that the pressure it's sitting at. Currently, I'm not connected to the ECU on here, but we're going to hop into that in a second, connect to the ECU and I can show you what I did then to set this system up. But essentially, it's a new fuel rail, new pressure regulator, dash six in, dash six back to the regulator and a dash eight over to the return of the fuel tank. On this side, we just capped it off, but this could also be good if I wanted to put another sensor over on this side. It's a nice, simple system. The bracket I've used is the bracket that was for the old solenoid valve for your uh, charcoal canister. We've got rid of that system now. So what I've done is basically welded a part to this bracket that was already existing, had it all powder coated, makes a beautiful place for this pressure regulator to sit. It's out the way and it looks nice and tidy. What we need to do now is set this fuel pressure regulator up to get it to a fuel pressure that I'm happy with. The Mini comes at three and a half bar, so we're gonna to look to set that up at about three and a half bar. The reason we'll do that, rather than setting it anything higher at this moment, I know on the last carnation of this build, it ran at three and a half bar, so all of the settings in the ECU versus the fuel pressure I'm seeing here at the moment are all set. So I've got all my information on the screen, and what I'm gonna do now is get the fuel pump running, because I've got an aftermarket ECU, we can do that. 
if you haven't got an aftermarket ECU, you might have to fall the ECU or the fuel pump just to get it up and running so you've got a constant fuel pressure. Don't worry that your pump's running all of the time. That would be perfectly normal inside a car whilst it's driving. So what I need to do is take my pen. We're using a Vipec. We're gonna to connect to the ECU. Okay, I'm online. Next thing I wanna do is find my fuel pump which should come under auxiliary outputs fuel. Once I've got that, I haven't got that, that's my injectors. It's in the next one down, I believe. There it is, fuel pump. We go to the fuel pump. Currently it's set to low. So what we wanna do is just change that up to high. Okay, that is my fuel pump system running around. So at the bottom now, what we can see is we've got fuel pressure running at 52.2. That's actually pretty damn close to where I want it to be. I do actually want it to be 52, but what I'll show for an example is you put your key on here and as you change this you should see now as we're opening it up the fuel pressure is lowering and you can hear the fuel pump getting faster and faster because it's just there's no restriction but as we come down again if I if I really go too far with this you'll hear the fuel pump starting to strain so there's our 52.2 that we were at previously now if I go a bit further you may hear now that the fuel pump tone is changing. I wouldn't say that you want to set it by the uh, fuel pump sound, but I know that at this moment in time, 52 will do me, 52, somewhere in that region. I'll leave the nut loose on the top, and the reason for that, I want to make sure that uh, this is fully set. So now that I'm happy, I can see down here, 52.2. I'm going to continue with that fuel pressure because I know it's working. I can go into the computer, switch that off, fuel pump's off, and there you go, you see the fuel pressure drops straight back down. Unlike the standard fuel system, which actually holds the pressure continually, this does let it go as soon as it's finished. That's not a problem. You can hear that the system's going around. You can't hear any air bubbles being produced in the tank. When you initially turn it on, this, this pipe at the bottom is obviously full of air. So what I did is wound this completely out to allow for fuel just to keep circulating, just to get rid of any of the air that's holding the pipe at the bottom. That's all gone now. So when it switches on, you don't get any bubbles produced in the tank. And again, bubbles are something you don't want to produce because that causes cavitation at the pump. And that is it. That's as simple as it can be for the fuel pressure if you have got a Vipec. So what you do, go into your computer and you're looking for analog inputs. And there you go, you can go down, set that up to be fuel pressure. The way you do that is just double click on it, go down, find fuel pressure. Now, depending on your sensor, you might have to do what I've done here and put a calibration file in. So if I scroll down, find it calibration six and in calibration six what you'll see here is at 0.5 volts it's basically nothing at 0.50 it's something and down here we're saying that we're reading in psi and what we're saying is 0.5 equals zero and 4.5 equals 100 psi this will depend on your manufacturer so if you've gone for a bigger bigger sensor then you'll just need to adapt that but once you've put that calibration setting in your other setting you're fine, you've now got a digital fuel pressure. So from here, I can see my fuel pressure, my oil pressure, my foot pedals, map sensor, coolant, oil temperature sensor. There should be oil pressure in there, there is. I've got my battery voltage, and all of this information that's in this ECU, I can send over a can link to my display. So rather than having hundreds and hundreds of gauges, which are gonna be useless anyway, because you're not gonna look at them all at the same time. I can send this straight to the ECU and I can create warnings based on every one of these. So if my fuel pressure drops, I don't need to lift the bonnet, look at a gauge in there to see whether there's a there's something going on. I can see everything from within the, within the car. And when it comes to tuning, rather than looking in different places, everything is in one place. And I can continue to add more graphs to this screen as I require them. Thank you for watching my video. If you've liked what you've seen in here, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, then hit the subscribe. I really want to get those numbers up if possible. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments below. Otherwise, take it easy. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.